This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Police constable arrested following firearm and ammunition seizure. A police constable has been arrested and charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition following the seizure of a Glock pistol and an assortment of ammunition on Friday, October 28. According to reports, lawmen received the information around 1.30 p.m. of a group of men who had fired and were acting suspiciously at the Swallowfield Island Traffic Authority Examination Depot in Kingston. The lawmen following this tip went to the location where the four reported the suspicious men were seen. They were accosted by the police. The police said that while searching the men, one gold and black Astria Glock 9mm pistol affixed with a magazine was removed from the front of one of the men's pants waist. The man then identified himself to be a police constable stationed at the Area 5 headquarters. The police constable was then escorted to the Jamaica Constabular Force Operations Branch where the firearm was reportedly examined and found to contain a magazine with 15 rounds of ammunition and one in the chamber. There was no serial number on the weapon, the police reported. The police said that a further search of the police constable resulted in the confiscation of one 9mm round, which was found in his right front jeans pants pocket, and one black firearm holster, which was taken from the front of his pants waist. Further investigation was carried out at the police constable's home, where he handed over a pair of brown clerk's shoes with the right foot containing one M16 magazine with 30 rounds and the left foot containing one brown paper bag with 14 live and 3 blank 5.56 cartridges. A paper bag with 15 9mm cartridges and a clear plastic bag with 2 12-gauge cartridges, one M16 blank and one 22 cartridge were also seized. The police reported that a number of accoutrements which include a firearm holster, baton and a carry-on were also taken for safekeeping pending outcome of the investigation. Saint Anne Police Investigating Teenager's Death The Saint Anne's Bay Police have yet to make a breakthrough in the murder of a teenager whose body was discovered with a gunshot wounds on Thursday. The deceased has been identified as Nicardo Stewart, a 15-year-old of Lilyfield and Windsor Saint Anne. It is reported that the body of the teenager was found in bushes in the Lafelands community in the parish about 8.30 a.m. Thursday. The police were called and the team which responded observed what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the head of the teenager's body. Residents remember Slain Cop as a good police at nine nights. Residents of West Kingston, well-wishers and the friends of Corporal Oliver Mullins Jr. converged on the Denham Town Police Station for a nine night to celebrate the cop who was slain last week in the line of duty. They swapped stories about the well-loved cop who trenched down residents dubbed the good police who tried to mentor young men from the community. They recalled fondly his kindness, his bravery and his willingness to lend a listening ear to everyday problems. On Thursday, October 21, about 10.45 p.m., the corporal was among a team of officers who responded to a call from residents in the area when they were attacked by gunmen, a Jamaica Constabulary Force statement said. One of the gunmen was reportedly killed in the incident. The police high command condemned the killings. At the time, Mullins was a second cop killed in less than a week. I was raped in the army, says retired major. The top brass of the Jamaican army protected a senior officer after he was accused in 2006 of sexually assaulting a female colleague multiple sources have charged. The claim comes as a senior officer is now at the center of sex assault allegations that rocked the Jamaica Defense Force last week after more than a dozen female soldiers accused him of rape, sexual touching and unwanted sexual advances, the news sources disclosed. But while confirming that the alleged 2006 incident was reported to him, former Army Chief Rear Admiral Harley Lewin said his investigation found that the claim did not reach the level of credibility that the rape had taken place. I personally investigated, inquired into the report, and based on my inquiries and the questioning of the persons involved, the allegations fell short of being credible, Lewin told the news on Friday. 
Lewin said he communicated his findings to the complainant, who held the rank of major, after learning that she had retained an attorney. I said I will not take this any further because it has fallen short of being credible. So I told the complainant that if she wishes, she could pursue it through whatever lawyer she has engaged, and I reminded her that she could seek redress to the defense board, he said. And there I let the matter rest until now. The former chief of defense staff also defended his decision to personally investigate the accusation. Or I could have formed a team and let the thing spread beyond everything before we got anywhere. Had I found any merit, I then would have taken it further, if anything more needed to be inquired into, he explained. During a news interview on Wednesday, the now retired major who made the 2006 rape allegation complained that higher ops did nothing about her report even after she provided a witness statement. Instead, she claimed that her alleged attacker, who was a captain at the time, was placed on one-year probation and has since been promoted twice. The 16-year army veteran blasted the mechanism engaged by the JDF to probe her allegation, describing it as harass karam because the crime that was committed required it to be a more formalized, structured process. It wasn't some lowly private soldier. I already had 16 years of service under my belt. They protected him. No more women ended up suffering because they did not do what they were supposed to do, she charged. I wonder, years later, and with all this coming out, if they look back and realize that had they gotten rid of this person, these women would not have had to suffer, she said, referring to the over a dozen female soldiers behind the latest allegations. The alleged 2006 incident will form part of the investigation being conducted by the JDF as it probes that the latest allegations her attorney, Aisha Robert Cunningham, disclosed. This is not the first time this incident and the allegations have been brought to the attention of the defense force. As to where it goes the second time around is a matter entirely within the investigative powers of the JDF, the attorney said. The JDF sidestepped questions submitted by the news relating to the alleged 2006 incident. Instead, the Army's Civil Military Corporation and Media Affairs Office disclosed that the latest allegation of sexual harassment against a senior officer was uncovered during a routine security vetting. The investigations are ongoing, and like any responsible entity, the JDF must abide by the principles of natural justice in which both accuser and accused are entitled to due process of law, the Army said in an email response on Friday. Following last week's accusations, the JDF said it recalled the senior officer at the center of the sexual assault scandal who was on an overseas training assignment to enable further investigation and the appropriate disciplinary proceedings. A spokesperson for the British High Commission in Jamaica confirmed that an individual attending military training in the United Kingdom is returning to Jamaica at the request of the JDF. It would not be appropriate for us to comment further. This is a matter for the JDF, said the spokesperson. The former army major and the multiple past and the current military insiders painted a picture of wider sexual misconduct within the ranks of the JDF. Two male soldiers were arrested in March last year and charged with rape, grievous sexual assault and a robbery with aggravation arising from an incident involving a trainee female soldier at the Army's St. Andrew headquarters. That incident allegedly happened on March 10 last year and was immediately reported to the police division that investigates sex crimes the JDF acknowledged at the time. In 2019, a high-ranking officer was allowed to quietly resign from the JDF after he was accused of sexually assaulting a female officer while they were deployed overseas. The incident was reported to JDF higher-ups by Canadian soldiers who were part of the deployment. They use their ranks to get sexual favors from people that are junior to them. That happens and continues to happen, the now-retired Army Major charged. The JDF Media Office said it would not be in a position to respond to questions about the alleged 2019 incident based on the nature of the allegations against a former member. However, we would urge that a request in the form of an access to information be submitted, and if it can be addressed at that stage, we will not hesitate to do so, said the military. Lewin said that during his five-year tenure as head of the military, 
the 2006 incident was the sole allegation of sexual misconduct he had to deal with. I am not aware of that, he said, when asked if incidents of sexual misconduct were prevalent in the JDF. The retired Army Major said post-traumatic stress disorder triggered by her alleged ordeal became so overwhelming that she opted to walk away from the only job she ever wanted to do two years before she was eligible for a pension. I was expected to continue to serve and to be in the same environment as this individual. JDF is not that big. We only have one officer's club, she said. This individual would actually approach me and try to have a conversation. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.